Well guys, another Halloween season is in the books, and as sad as that is, I personally had a great October, and I hope you did too. The next two are ones to look forward to, obviously, because we have Halloween Kills next year, and then the following year we have Halloween Ends to look forward to, so I'm pretty excited. And as of today, November 3rd, 2019, Halloween Kills has officially wrapped filming. Ryan Turek posted a picture on his Twitter of David Gordon Green and said it was an amazing journey. And aside from the fact that this finally confirms 100% that they are not filming Halloween Kills and ends back to back, it also lets us know that everything went well on the production. It didn't seem like anything bad happened and everything went according to plan, except for a few leaks, of course. Thankfully though, those leaks did die down. So what I'm assuming is that over the past couple of weeks or so, they've been shooting on a soundstage. And if you remember to way back when they were still casting for the movie, they haven't even started shooting yet. They did share a shot of everyone hanging out on a soundstage. So that's what I'm assuming the rest of the movie was shot on. Not that it really matters. I just wanted to keep you guys updated. And just like I predicted in my last video, Blumhouse did share something from the set of Halloween Kills. I said it was going to be probably a poster or a still of Michael Myers or something, but it ended up being a teaser trailer for the movie. And there was a lot of new footage in it, which is awesome. That was a great Halloween treat. The first thing I want to talk about is arguably the most important thing in that entire trailer and it's how Michael may have escaped the basement at the end of the movie and it's actually a pretty simple explanation. See there's a shot of Michael standing on the front porch of Lori's house and it's still on fire at that point in time and weirdly enough his coveralls and his mask look like they're completely fine. It doesn't look like any of the hair is burned off and it definitely doesn't look like it's melted into his face. It makes sense that the coveralls are okay though because as we learned in my how he escaped theories video the coveralls he's wearing are completely fire retardant so he would be protected from the fire thanks to those. Another interesting fact is that there's water pouring off of the roof of the house. Now, if you look back on Halloween 2018, it is very clearly not raining at the end of that movie. And interestingly enough, while the original video was posted on Twitter and Instagram in a square format, IGN got a full widescreen version and it does show a fire hose shooting water onto the house. All right, guys, so I spent some time piecing this all together and here's how I think it's going to work. So when Lori lights her house on fire at the end of last year's movie, it obviously makes makes a very big blaze, which is going to create a lot of smoke. Now, I don't think the guy that picked Lori, Karen, and Allison up on the side of the road is actually just driving by. I think who he is is probably one of Lori's neighbors who sees the smoke and then immediately calls the fire department to go to Lori's house because he thinks, hey, her house is on fire. She's going to need some help. So he picks them up and takes them straight to the hospital. The fire department is basically hot on his trail and they get there. They break into the house to see if anyone's still inside and they notice that Michael is in the basement. Basement. They don't know that it's the shape. They don't know that it's Michael Myers. There was a lot of confusion at the end of Halloween 2018. So they use their pickaxe or their fire axe to break the bars that are holding him in the basement. They help him out and he obviously slaughters them and makes his way back to Haddonfield. I think that would work really well because it would be a short enough time frame for him not to be completely melted down there. And it would be pretty cool to see him kill some firefighters and then take an ax and bust his way out of the house. I think that would be awesome. The trailer also 100% confirms to me at least that he is not going Going to be supernatural because if you notice every single shot of him holding a weapon or choking someone in the trailer shows him using his right hand. I mean, obviously he wouldn't be able to use his left hand because he's missing two fingers. Let's get the out of me. And I'm sure you eagle-eyed Halloween fans have noticed this by now, but every single shot where we do see his left hand in the trailer has it curled in a little bit. And just to be safe, I went on James Jude Courtney's Instagram to find a picture of the prosthetic effect they put on his hand. And yes, it is his left hand that loses fingers in Halloween 2018. We also got some pretty solid confirmation that Laurie Strode will be spending most of Halloween kills in the Haddonfield Memorial Hospital. Right at the end of the trailer, we get a shot of her being admitted to the hospital completely covered in blood. And earlier in the trailer, there's a shot of of Karen sitting next to a hospital bed, but you can see Lori in the reflection of the window. If you've been watching my videos for the past few months, you know that I've been predicting that Lori might die in Halloween Kills, but now I'm pretty sure that's not the case. First off, Halloween 2018 established pretty well that Michael does not care about Lori at all. For some reason, she thinks he's going to come all the way out to her house to try and kill her, but we know that the only reason he ever gets there is because Sartain runs him over with the car and delivers him straight to her. Of course, the two cops are there, 
and Ray is there, so he starts walking towards the house because he wants to kill them. And once he realizes Lori and Karen are inside, he wants to break in and get them too. It's just how Michael Myers is. The shot of Michael standing on Lori's porch holding the ax basically tells us that whoever shows up at that house to put out the blaze is probably going to die. And that's how Michael will get a car that he can then take back to Haddonfield because that seems like his ultimate goal, to go back to Haddonfield and start murdering people. There is another shot confirming this and that's the one of the lady dressed up as the nurse pointing a gun at what looks like Michael getting out of an SUV. She's actually a returning character from Halloween 2018. And if you don't remember when we see her, she's shown getting into a car and driving away at the beginning-ish of the one take in last year's movie. And a lot of people, myself included, are assuming that she's Julian's mom. That's because she'll probably hear that two kids were murdered in her house and she'll wanna go back and see if Julian's safe and she'll probably encounter Michael Myers when he gets back to Haddonfield and she'll have a vendetta there because he kinda went after her kid. It makes sense. I also think this is where the mob rules title is going to come into play because I feel like once Michael escapes the basement, the police or the local news are going to start telling people that, hey, Michael Myers is coming back to Haddonfield. You need to stay safe because he could kill you. And that would give the movie the opportunity to jump around between characters who encounter Michael like Tommy, Lindsay, Lonnie, Nurse Marion, and even Cameron. And wouldn't you know it, we see most of those characters in the trailer. Lindsay is at the park with who I'm assuming is her daughter pushing her on the swing set when it looks like she encounters Michael. After that, we get a pretty awesome shot of Tommy Doyle all grown up wielding a baseball bat. Then of course, there's a shot of Michael sitting on top of a car and smashing the passenger side window with his open palm. That's a callback to the original Halloween when Nurse Marion and Dr. Loomis go to pick him up at Smith's Grove. And even though we don't see her face, I'm assuming that's her in the car in Halloween Kills. It's a pretty good callback. And they finally confirm the flashback to 1978 with the shot of Michael standing in front of Lonnie Elam, as a kid though this time. I've seen a lot of people assuming that because Jamie Lee Curtis was only on set for around nine days, that basically means she's going to die at the beginning at the Head and Field Memorial Hospital. I don't think that's the case though, mainly because it looks like Halloween, Halloween Kills, and Halloween Ends all take place on one long Halloween night. Knowing that Michael doesn't care about Lori and he escapes her house just fine, I feel like if she's in the Head and Field Memorial Hospital, she's safe from him. He'll be preoccupied with all these other returning characters throughout the movie, and then at the end there might be a catalyst like Karen dying or Allison dying because we do see her outside of the hospital in the trailer that will get Lori to say fuck it and go after him once and for all and Halloween ends. I feel like that's a pretty good character arc for her. And speaking of Allison, I feel like her motivation in leaving the hospital is to go find Cameron because he has no idea his entire friend group is dead and he's completely drunk, so she's gonna have to go rescue him. Honestly, I'm completely fine with Lori Strode being down for the count in Halloween kills and coming back in Halloween ends. I really don't think it's smart to kill her off in the second movie because they've been so adamant about calling this the Laurie Strode Michael Myers saga. So if you don't have both of them in the third movie, it doesn't make a lot of sense. They're also not trying to come up with ways to shoehorn her into the Halloween kills plot when she's been stabbed in the gut and thrown off a roof. You know, it makes sense for her to be hospitalized at least for a little bit in the second movie. Overall though, I'm pretty impressed with what we've seen so far. Obviously these are all behind the scenes shots, so there's nothing that says they'll make it into the final movie, but if any of the shots we've seen from this trailer so far make it in, I'm totally fine with that. They look great, they're introducing some awesome plot ideas, and I'm all for it. There's really only one thing making me nervous with this movie still, and it's the fact that none of these people ever left Haddonfield. Again, I'm from a small town in Michigan, and I can tell you that when I graduated high school, the one thing that was on everyone's minds was getting out, and a lot of those people when they graduated college also didn't move back home. They got jobs in other places, because when you grow up in a small town, you know it like the back of your hand and you get bored, you get sick of it and you want to leave. And if someone went around trying to kill you in your hometown, you probably want to leave when you grew up as well. So hopefully the pacing moves quick enough, the plot is quick enough to justify why they're still there. Like if there's some cool scenes with Tommy Doyle facing off against Michael, I'm not really going to question the fact that he still lives there, you know? All right guys, that's all I have for you on Halloween Kills. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed and hit the notification bell. I'm trying to get to the arbitrary goal of 25,000 subs by the end of the year. So help me out if you can with that. Also, if you haven't heard yet, I did make a t-shirt with my friend Blake from Loudmouth Threads. He did all the work on it. It looks amazing. I'll link it down in the description. It's pretty cheap and a lot of people seem to like it. So if you want to see it for yourself, I'll leave the link down there. Anyway, guys, my name is Jimmy Champagne and I'll see you in the next one. Shape on.